Right, so here's the deal. I'm in downtown Manhattan, New York. Stinking hot day. And I'm at Penn Station, Moynihan Train Hall. And I'm about to go inside there, there, and start my epic, <laughs> my train journey, a series of train journeys around the USA. And nothing really is written in stone at all, or indeed in train timetables. I'm just gonna kind of wing it a bit and see how it all works out. So yeah, something like that. Uh, the plan is to use this ticket that you can get, which is basically the USA Rail Pass. I haven't been sponsored for this, to be clear. And I'll be using that, and it's like, you can do 10 segments in 30 days. So yeah, let's see how that goes, see where I end up. So this is Amtrak's rail map of the USA powered by Google and this is, oh I'm the voiceover by the way <laughs> how's it going I'm basically the same person but I'm older um, I know more and I would say I'm actually a better person than the other guy that's also me so Amtrak services as you can see here cover large swathes of what they call the contiguous United States. So there's a lot there to explore. And you have these wonderful, look at these these journeys, these long distance sort of loping strides that the track takes across the US here. Um, all these really memorable names, California Zephyr, the South, <laughs> this is where I trip myself up, so memorable. The Southwest Chief, I think. Um, there's Sunset Limited, what a fantastic name for a service. And then the one I'm likely to be taking, so I could pretty much go anywhere, but the one I've got in mind is I'd love to go across the top here on the Empire Builder. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, so here's the first obstacle. I brought this rather ludicrous item with me. Let's call that my penance or the, the mark of my stupidity, but I brought a really big suitcase with me. Um, so that's gonna cause a few issues, but not here because I'm gonna check it in. So I'm gonna head over uh, towards the Amtrak ticketing and baggage check-in. It's over there, look. How's this work? Scan barcode. Well, I can't do that with my phone because I'm filming with a phone, so I'll have to stop filming. So, unfortunately, it's access denied. There's no baggage car on this train, so I'm going to have to lump around the weight of my own stupidity with me here. So, my first segment, first part of my trip is I'm going to a place called Harrisburg in Pennsylvania. It's the state capital of Pennsylvania. And that is precisely where my knowledge ends. I know nothing else about it. So let's just go there and see what happens. I mean, I'll just arrive at a place, that's what's gonna happen. So. That is the train I'm getting on right there. Keystone service to Harrisburg. So the Keystone service runs from New York, New York. So good they named Albany the state capital. <laughs> Look at me throwing shade on New York, one of the world's great cities. Um, yeah, through New Jersey, reaches Trenton, and then we cross over into Pennsylvania, go to Philadelphia, and along to Harrisburg. It's about 200 miles, takes about three and a half hours. Uh, it's actually one of, the, one of the more trafficked routes. There's like a dozen trains a day or more. Most of them run all the way to New York. Some of them apparently only run to Philadelphia. Uh, it's not even a, not, not even a double-decker train. It's just a regular train and there's no like viewing car and there's no uh, restaurant car. So, yeah. Looks like queuing might be a major part of these journeys. Bit of a mad rush to platform five, or oh, track five. Oh, 
boots anyway. Okay, so that's kind of a bit of mad stress because the seats aren't booked. You, it's just like open, you get on and take your seat and there's a, you know, you know, scuffling, fist fights, that kind of thing, you know. Um, 100 seats and uh, 200 passengers and just like sort it out between yourselves. Philadelphia and they basically just said right we're turning the train off <laughs> we're, go we're going in 25 minutes it was sort of slightly dramatic the way the lights all went off but uh, there we go the station is absolutely stunning really So, I've arrived in Harrisburg. Was it the right choice? I've no idea yet. We'll find out. I don't think there's that much here going on, to be honest. Um, yeah. We've had a bit of a bit of rain on the way, but it seems to have cleared up now, thankfully. And the good thing about a place like this, that's my suitcase you can hear clacking, my penance I'm pushing along. Uh, the good thing about a place like this is uh, it's really small so I've got out of the train station and I'm pushing my suitcase to some kind of a hotel because I'm filming this I feel obliged to uh, to follow the lights come on there we go finally Oh, side note, you may notice I'm wearing a different top to before. I was going between the carriages with a cup of coffee that I picked up at Philadelphia Station. <laughs> and it was a massive jolt right at the wrong moment. And I covered myself in coffee. And uh, yeah, it didn't look so great. So I had to use the bathroom and uh, dig out a t-shirt. This is apparently the county courthouse. Fascinating building, look at this. He's waving over the road there. Hey mate! Can I stay in your hotel free please? I'm an influencer. How many followers have you got? 12. Do you influence them? Not really. <laughs> Here we go, $71 plus tax. It's, uh, 
it's all right, isn't it? It's just a hotel room. Apparently, it's got a view. I'm skeptical. There you go, there's a view. <laughs> Didn't say a view of what, did it? And um, I'm sure you've seen one of these before. It kind of, it's got a smell of, you know, when you wash something and then you put it away when it wasn't quite dry and then you get it out again. It smells of that, but that's okay. It doesn't smell of smoke and uh, they were quite particular about that and there was a whole thing that I had to sign up to saying, I'm definitely not going to smoke, which is true. I'm definitely not going to smoke because I don't smoke. Uh, yeah, but it's it's fine. It's comfortable. It's cosy. It's cosy, isn't it? I had to send the lights on to make it cosy. Uh, nothing short of starting a, a small log fire, which is probably prohibited <laughs> under the smoking regulations. Uh, I don't know that I could. it could be much cosier. I'm hungry, but it's late and everything's closed. So it's going to have to be a weird prepackaged sandwich, Kaiser sandwich, ham and cheese. Includes an individual packet of mayonnaise. It's not bad actually, it's all right. <laughs> it's about as bog standard as sandwiches get, but there it is. Love this building, and I especially love this juxtaposition of this half timbered building next to this thing. And this weird little place as well, just still on its own. Reminds me a little bit of in Vietnam when they have those really sort of skinny, tall, townhouses. So at this point I normally go and find a bar and sit at the bar and get chatting to some locals but um, I don't know, Monday night. I see there are a few places open, there are a few places in those places, a few places, a few people in those places but uh, not really feeling it to be honest so I think I'm just going to turn in. One thing to note, by the way, is it does feel really quite safe around here. I feel perfectly happy walking around at night with my phone extended like this, like, hey everyone, here's my phone if you want it. And um, yeah, it's so different in that respect to when I actually flew in, I was into the little town of Newark in New Jersey, which is part of the sort of New York greater metropolis or whatever and that felt some parts of that felt really sketchy like really really sketchy and i just not picking that at all here you know it's just it feels just just really pleasant and also it's t-shirt weather as you can see it's just a rather pleasant evening in general so here i am in the daytime harrisburg pennsylvania really nice look at these bridges Splendid. It's a very nice city in general, and uh, I was just in a shop talking to somebody. Uh, that's the extent of my journalism these days. And he was saying, like, I asked him how it was to live here, and he was saying that it's kind of boring. And I can see that. I can see there's not much to do, but it's a very pleasant boring, and there are worse kinds of boring. Uh, it's a very nice place in general. I did find myself thinking that. I think when you go to places, well, I often think, oh, could I live here? I don't know why that question comes into my head. I always imagine what it'd be like if you were here sort of longer term. And yeah, I think it might feel a bit small pretty quickly, but yeah, it's really pleasant. I mean, I don't know if you'd come here. I don't know if you'd go out your way to come here. I did. So, so there's that. It's not like, oh, you've got to go and see the thing. There's no the thing. It's just a really pleasant place. is a spotted lanternfly and it's an invasive species um, and they're everywhere really so they're all over New York and Newark I was staying in Newark for a bit and 
where else have I been? Where else have I been? <laughs> but all over New York I saw them, there's my shadow, I'll get my own shadow. All over New York I saw them, and uh, not like I went all over New York. And there's a ton of them here as well. And uh, they're actually beautiful creatures, but there's so many of them that I'm guessing that it might be a bit of a problem. When you're walking down the sidewalk, you see loads of them everywhere. You see them flying around, dying about, taking off, landing, and a lot of them squish, just squished on the sidewalk. They're actually an invasive pest. You see, I know more, but they are a, quote, a significant threat to a wide range of agricultural crops, including walnut grapes, hops, apples, blueberries, and stone fruits. The New York City Department of Parks and Recreation say on their own official website, harming our city's wildlife is prohibited. <laughs> I don't know why they're talking in a plummy English accent. But... but in an effort to slow the spread of this troublesome species, we are putting out a one-time call. If you see a spotted lanternfly, please squish and dispose of this invasive pest. So I love the use of squish there in officialdom. Uh, yeah, so that is the official advice is squish them. Here's the state capitol. Look at this for a magnificent building. Wow. So here I am in this rather splendid park in the centre of town and it says that this plot of land was given to the, I don't know, to the legislature or something, to the, to the people in power uh, by John Harris who is the founder of the town, hence Harrisburg. Does it all make sense now? And yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, I often wonder what it means to be the founder of a city. How do you found a city? Do you just turn up and say, I don't want to give the plain words, look what I found. But, um, you know, like, how do you do that? Do you just, do you buy the land yourself? Do you just kind of put a flag down and say, anyone else want to live here? I don't know how that works, but he did. He founded it and uh, it's his city and then he gets to name it, so it's Harrisburg. My name is Neil Benyon, so what would that be? Benyonburg? Sounds a bit... I'm not sure that works. You got Battenberg, haven't you? But I think Benyonville might be better. Yeah, but uh, yeah, this is actually... Uh, yeah, what a splendid town. Just that, really. Okay, so quick quiz for non-Americans. How many of these cities have you heard of? Juneau, Frankfort, Topeka. Um, trying to see if I can think of some more. Oh, they escaped my mind now, but... Oh, go on, I've got a few more for you. How about Lansing, Carson City, Annapolis, Madison, Bismarck, Providence. This might be a giveaway. Trenton, I mentioned this earlier. They're not well-known cities outside of the USA, but these are state capitals, like Harrisburg is the state capital here. Some are better known, like Boston is the state capital of Massachusetts, but then Olympia is the state capital of Washington State. So, yeah, I think the, um, my understanding is that the, the deciding factor is not like which is the biggest place, of course, the place could be the biggest and then it changes over time because cities grow and shrink and whatever. But I think in general the pattern is that places, unless there's a usual topograph unusual topography to a place, then it's generally like a, a town will be chosen to be the state capital just because it's very central in the state and therefore it's sort of easier from a point of view of governance, not because it's like the biggest place. So, yeah, kind of interesting to me. I'm gonna go with my penance. Still here, getting heavier. Feels heavier every day. Oh, it's like a runaway train. Anyway, that was that. If you like this video, then, if you liked this video, then like this video. And if you subscribe and click the bell, then you'll hear all about the new videos that I put out there, even if you don't want to. Till next time, bye-bye. Uh,